There's people, Tony, that say that you are a kind of like the artist of back in the day, like Snoop Dogg, let's say. And this is coming from comments that I get, right, to ask you. They say that you would only work with black artists mm -hmm. back in the 90s, right? And that now you're trying to, you know, come out, support Ras on this, like how Snoop Dogg now all of a sudden, all these, all these older guys are coming out, even like, let's say, Frost. Frost is now coming back. What do you say to people like that? Well, first, I'm glad that I'm here and I get a chance to address these questions. Of course. Um, I want to say before I ever met High C and, and with respect to my friends from uh, the original Spanish Fly, uh, Esa Daz, yes, sir. Uh, DJ Tricks, and Esa Rich Rock. What a lot of people don't know that I was working with Esa Rich Rock when he was in junior high school. I wanted to work with a Chicano, but he ended up getting into the group or he was already a part of the group, but we had demos. I was supposed to put him on mixed tapes at the Swami before I ever even met High C. And we're talking about 80s. Now, in the 80s, I only knew of one Chicano rapper in the 80s, other than Essa Rich Rock, who had nothing out yet. Kid Frost had a song called um, Rough Cuts and um, a song called Terminator. Then in 1990, he dropped uh, La Raza. Okay. Then Melo Manes came out with Mente Rosa same year. After that, I heard of Lighter Shade of Brown. Then I, uh, Spanish Flight comes out, so 18 with the bullet. Right. Uh, 1994, Mexican Power. Um, proper Dose. Proper Dose, my homies. Up to that point, from 88 to 94, there wasn't too many Chicanos that, uh, uh, for me to choose to work, to work with. Okay. okay. Now, Here's how I got my record deal for people to say, why are you only working with blacks? Let me explain that. I'm only doing mixtapes to sell at the Swamp Meet. I make them, I give the master to Steve Yano, and he duplicates them, he sells them. Okay? We did an original song, Goofing Off. At home, I had two I'm Your Puppets. High C's coming over, he's rapping, and the only reason why we got High C there was because NWA was now on tour in 1988. So now they're touring. I have nobody to rap on my mixtapes. So like I said previous, I was going to get S.A. Rich Rock, but when he got with his group, I decided not to use him. But we're talking about 80s. So I told High C, come on, man, you know, rap on my mixtapes. We did um, I'm Not Your Puppet, and I didn't know how good that was selling until one day I went and I started hanging around, and within maybe like 30 minutes, he must have sold about 20 of those tapes. So about a month later, uh, Steve tells me, Let's do a follow-up. And I said, well, I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, I'm not a producer. I'm just a DJ guy. Right. So he comes over, and he said, what records did you use? And I said, well, I have this Aslan Odis compilation because I have doubles of everything. So he said, um, I don't know, play something and see what he likes. So I flipped it over, and um, Billy Stewart sitting in the park was on. So he right away, so what shall I, what shall I, what shall I do? <laughs> so I said, fuck it, let's do it. With those two mixtapes, now keep in mind, I would probably already had about 25 mixtapes without High C. With those mixtapes, um, I'm hanging out at the Swan Meet. Here comes a guy looking, hey, who, tell Steve, who did this mixtape? And he thought it was somebody there to bust, bust us for selling bootlegs. <laughs> and believe it or not, Steve kind of ratted me out. He said, he did him. <laughs> okay? So I said, yeah, but he sells them. So... So he says, well, look, who right here, it says, hi, C, who is this guy? He says, I, I work for Disney, and I want to sign him. They came looking for us. That's why I always say, uh, honestly, if you release good music, money will come knocking. We, didn't, we weren't looking for no deal. That's an amazing story. So I said, I'll walk you to the back of the swamp meet, and be, I'll jump ahead. We ended up getting signed to seven years. But for one album, we got paid 140000 And uh, so when I started touring with them, all the talk, he's only working with blacks. Okay. That's how that started. But at that point, hey, you got your deal. What are you going to do? Tell him, no, I'm not coming if I don't bring a Chicano. Like, no, it's especially, even in today's industry, if somebody gets you and they say, hey, we want to hire you for this, it's business. Right. Now, I, I will say this. Working on the black side of the industry, the majority of all of them had record deals. So they had budgets. I had guys on the street that were rapping or rhyming cat with hat and wanted a record deal and wanted me to do their music for free. I'm not going to do that. So when I would turn them down, oh, he only works for blacks. Uh -huh. 
No, they're the only ones paying. <laughs> I work for who pays me, fool. 